Greetings, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday afternoon live um, with the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. I'm Tom Matuska, here all by myself. I usually have my little partners sit next to me, but they're out in the shop doing a, an array of other jobs. Um, so today is gonna be a day in the shop, and we're going to take you from project to project. We just have a whole lot of things going on. We've got uh, leopards and trout and, and pike and crocodiles and all kinds of things. Um, Many of you that are watching handle these projects every day and some of you maybe never have. Um, so we're just gonna show you different projects that we have going and, and how we address them. And you can um, text in your messages with your questions and uh, we'll try to answer them as we go along. Um, the first thing we're gonna show you, this is a, a big reproduction pipe. This is a Lake Country um, Northern and uh, um, we've got it. I've got it this far, and as I was working on it today, uh, Mandy mentioned that we had a lot of response on questions on how to put on the spot pattern and things like that. So um, I kind of had him finish it on the back, but I steel wooled it off just so we could show you a little bit of how to do some of the detail work. But as you know, when you get a reproduction, typically uh, the Lake Countries come white, uh, the fins are translucent. And um, the first thing I do is I like to give them what I call an antique wash. I spray the entire fish with a dark color and this, it, it'll depend on the fish that I'm doing. Um, in this case, I used a really deep, deep brown olive color. I sprayed the entire fish. I then allow that to dry. I'm using Life Tone lacquer paints. Um, <clears throat> lacquer paints as opposed to water paints, lacquer paints, do not have great integrity. They do not adhere really good. What holds lacquer onto your um, project is the top coat and the gloss. So it works good for the antique coat because when I steel wool it off, um, the lacquer comes off really easy except for around all the scales and the scale pockets. Any place there's detail on this fish, um, my dark paint stayed. And that's why we call it an antiquing. It kind of gives it a little wash. At that point, I come in and give it an olive color over the whole fish, um, reasonably dark, and then I'm going to turn him around here. And you might have to climb right up on top to see this. Um, then what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to recreate a similar pattern according to my reference material. Now I've seen lots of people paint these spots in. I've seen lots of people do them with a brush, do them with Q-tips, do them with all different kinds of things. Um, what works really good for me is I've sprayed that entire side of the fish head. We're gonna work right here. Um, sprayed that entire side of the fish head and now I'm gonna take um, lacquer thinner. I just have plain lacquer thinner in my airbrush. I have the air pressure turned up reasonably high. Um, it's a good idea when you're spraying to use your respirator. Get in the habit. I can't talk with one, so I'm not gonna spray a lot. Get in the habit of getting yourself a good um, dual filter respirator. You'll be around to mount lots and lots of paint, lots and lots of fish if you start out using one of those. Now, I'm gonna take, I usually have a towel that I can absorb any of the lacquer that blows off, but I'm just going to start with a pattern. I like to start around the eye, and you notice how that blows the color right off. Now, I have a lot of lacquer thinner spraying out onto the side of my fish fish head and that used to scare me like I'm going to uh, wreck something and it's going to run on my fish but it actually helps a lot in giving it a mottled color coloration see now that looks like I'm painting a white color, but I'm actually not. This is nothing more than lacquer thinner blowing off my paint. A 
and just look at your reference material or your reference pictures and try to copy what you see. Try to look at the spacing, look at the size of your markings. Now we're gonna come in and we're gonna add golds and pearls to these markings. Every pike is a little bit different as far as um, kind of what iridescent color. Some of them aren't iridescent at all. Um, these markings are. A lot of times they're a vivid, vivid um, golden yellow. Sometimes they're pearl. And again, I'm doing nothing but spraying thinner, almost like sandblasting the paint off. So what you're doing right there, you've done to the whole body. I've done that over the whole body so far. Um, now this one hasn't been, you can do it over here too. Um, but that'll just blow your paint right off. And if you overdo it, you just retouch it up with your paint? Sure. For those that aren't taxidermists, why choose a replica? Um, we do a lot of replicas. Uh, we used to, I'd have people come in and they'd say, um, I bet you do a lot of replicas. And you know, years ago we used to do, I'd say two a year, and then it went to five a year, then it went to 10 a year. And we do a whole lot of them, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of replica. Reason to do them is um, this fish was caught and released and is out there for somebody else to catch. And we can do a replica for that young man and he can have it you know, in his house and his, when he goes to college, he can have his dorm room and above his fireplace when he gets married. And, <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, that fish is still, is still out there. But this is how I like to start. And uh, we're gonna take you around the rest of the shop and I'll keep playing with this a little bit and show you, uh, show you it as it trans, transpires here a little bit. Now you see, I have a lot of overspray of lacquer thinner going down the side of my fish um, that used to really panic me. And the more that runs into the little cracks, it kind of helps. And some of these pike are really, really speckled and some of them not so much. So you pick out a pattern that you like, something that looks good, maybe the customer's picture, and you try to match it. And if you'll notice, these are dots, they're squiggles. Um, sometimes they're big, some pike have huge, huge markings, um, barring, so, uh, some of them are very intricate and small, um, just copy, copy your pictures, copy your reference material. Can you just use acetone and get the same effect? Maybe. Maybe, I'm sure it'll eat that lacquer paint just like uh, lacquer thinner well. Now, I don't have the same effect with water paints. You people using water paints, um, I don't think it's gonna blow off as easy as the lacquers do. What's the reason with that? Uh, like I, I mentioned before, the integrity of the paint, they say lacquer paint has not much integrity, meaning bonding power. Water paint does. Water paint's like spraying on Elmer's glue. Sticks good. But anyway, I'll keep working on this. Um, you can take them to your next victim over there. We got some fun yeah. projects um, going on. Oh, we're gonna have Brett set up on the we kind of ganged up on this guy this weekend, or this week, I mean. Oops, I'm sorry, I got the wrong eye here. And this, when you talked about a, a reproduction fish, this entire creature is real, except we did mold the head. We made a mold of the real this real crocodile's head, which we thought was a little bit more accurate than what we could buy. And uh, so he's got an artificial head, and 
we're going to treat that, I think we're going to treat it just like a fish head, right? Yeah. Artificial just fish head. Nothing fish different eye. than a fish, only on a little bit yeah. bigger scale. And uh, we're going to set eyes. We're going to paint that. We're going to do everything we do to a fish. Yeah, so first and foremost, we've got some good reference material. This is kind of what we're shooting for. Um, previously, we've dremeled out and made plenty big opening to accommodate the eye. It looks like crocodile eyes come in all different colors and shades. We're going to put this one in here. And I'm just going to do that with Fix-It Sculpt. Okay. Um, I like Fix-It Sculpt. It's kind of got a neutral color that's going to match our, our reproduction head. Um, so that'll be nice and easy. It works together really well. Um, it's a good, it's a really good uh, sculpting epoxy. Just get this all mixed together. I'm using a little bit of water just to keep it from sticking my fingers. Does that head all bondo? This head is Bondo on the outside, and then it's foam, isn't it, Tom? Uh, and yeah, fiber, fiberglass in there, too. Yeah, yep. And the teeth are dental acrylic. acrylic. Yeah. Crown and bridge material. Fancy stuff. And why do you do that compared to using the real one? Mainly shrink, shrink and distortion. Um, I mean, just like a big, big pike or a muskie is difficult to control the, the shrinkage. You know, there's always a chance of bugs and odors and that sort of thing. And a crocodile head is way bigger. So I'm just going to put some material back here. I know that I've got this opened up significantly to accommodate that glass eye. How's your supply company going since you happen to be? We've been oh busy. My gosh. Everyone's been working so hard down there that we are getting caught up. All the little elves are making stuff. They are. They've been doing great. Now, I'm going to take, this is just oil-based clay, and I'm going to stick it right here on the front of that eye, and it's going to help me hold on to it so it doesn't uh, get too deep. So now I'm just gonna set that. We know that the pupil sits vertical. So I'm gonna rotate the pupil just like you would with a deer or a fish or anything else. Manipulate that. And come around, sneak in front, just look at it. Front on if you want to show them. Right in front of the nose, so I can match the other eye for depth and shape. We're going to give him just a little bit of a, a roll to his eye, so I'm going to have him look that direction by rotating it. Reach behind and pick it up just a bit. And I want it nice and tight to the lid here. Now there's a secondary lid here which was kind of ground off to a, so that we could get the eye in. I'm going to re-sculpt that in just a second, but um, I'm pretty happy with that for depth and happy with that for the orientation of the pupil. As I look at my reference here, I think that works out pretty well. So now, because this eye is round and the opening actually is a little bit oblong, just like I would with a fish, I'm gonna build a little bit of a sclera. I'm gonna fake that in to take up some of this gap. Is it better to use safety solvent when smoothing? Out your plastic putty or water. 
Um, that's a great question. I've actually always used safety solvent when using epoxy sculpt, and it was kind of a go-to for a long time. It works extremely well. Um, prior to safety solvent, I used a lot of lacquer thinner. Um, but I found that safety solvent is a little harsh with fix-it sculpt for some reason. Um, I found that water does nearly everything that fix-it sculpt does and doesn't make it quite so soft and mushy. So um, I would say when using fix-it, you can probably get away with just water. Um, when you're using epoxy sculpt, safety solvent's a lifesaver. Right here in the front, I'm gonna make some room for that nictitating membrane. Pretty prominent in our reference here, this nictitating membrane right here. I'm gonna sculpt that in. And I'm, going, I'm actually working from the inside out. So these, all of these things work in layers. Anytime you're you're doing any of your fish repairs or even your game head repairs, um, it's nice to work in layers. So think of the lowest level first, things that sit the very lowest, and then build, a, build on top of them rather than filling this all in flush and then trying to sculpt in all of the individual layers. If you, if you, if you put them in naturally, it helps you a lot. So this is gonna take me a little bit of time to get this sculpted. And maybe mm -hmm. the thing to do would be to go back to Amber, who's over here working on a leopard, and uh, come back and visit the shop that I want to Working on just filling in a few parts, we went ahead and did some altering on this as you guys can see there's a lot of some screws of yeah <laughs> just a little bit a lot of screws holding all the legs and everything in place um, where we have altered so he had oh his legs kind of coming down hanging down a little bit more in front of him um, and we decided that the pose that we wanted he wanted is his, his uh, paws up underneath his chin with his head down before he had his head more in a alert upright position. So yeah, moving all that around, back legs also got shifted. So just kind of foaming in here while them guys were talking. Um, I think now we'll go ahead and switch to putting in uh, one of these flexible tails. And I went ahead and marked test fitted the tail onto the leopard so I could tell where it fit real nice for girth and for length and just checked it and said, yeah, that, that's where it should go. Um, and then I also had taken out, oh, right here. I had cut out, this was the original part that was there on the tail. So I went ahead and noticed where, where the line was as far as the, that's where the tail should end and I cut out that same distance there so that this will just slide into place. Now, I do still have that wire sticking out there, which is nice because we're gonna put this in with auto body putty. So I had already nipped off the wire for length. Now I'm just gonna work on Bending it in just a little bit. Something like that. Where we'll be able to, to screw a hole or drill a hole up in here and put that wire up in with auto body putty. And that's gonna really, really grab and help hold this tail into place. So first we'll kind of lay it in there. We have the flat side down and just kind of get a marking of where that is. I went up in there far enough. 
when I cut this, I knew that I cut it just a little bit deeper than what I needed to. So right about there is where we're going to put it on, which will be just fine. That'll give a nice transition with the auto body putty and the flexible tail. And this is a really good connection um, to help hold these on, makes a really strong connection and just a nice transition point. A lot of you guys that do life size know that tails can be kind of a funny spot for poor transitions. Just clean out any of that foam. Actually, I'll lower this down so I can angle the lever. Now I already went ahead and mixed mixed our auto body putty with some of the polyester resin so I can thin it out so it's a really nice pourable consistency and that's going to work really How good because it'll put in or you just tested it until it got to the consistency Yeah just just put some in and you know don't do a ton at a time just a just a tablespoon or so at a time I mean very very little at a time and then mix it up and just see how well it pours also when you add your um, when you add your hardener it does make the consistency a little bit thicker so if your borderline um, then I, you know I think that's gonna be you know thin enough might as well add a little bit more because as soon as you add that hardener it does change the consistency and makes it a little bit thicker. And then it also isn't a bad idea to go ahead and also have a few holes. I didn't mix a lot of hardener in there with that, so I have a little bit of time. It is nice to have some holes where that bondo or the auto body putty can go into and really make a good connection. And that's just going to help ensure that it's really going to grab it well. For those just tuning in, you're with Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, and we're doing a day in the shop. And remember, yeah. we do a giveaway every week at the end of the show, so make sure you share right now and let us know in the comments that you shared it because we will pick, be picking, the winner gets picked off the shares of the video. So make sure you share it. So I can tell already now that I mixed in this hardener that it's, it is thicker. It's still nice and thin enough to be able to pour. Just go ahead. Nothing's worse than being adjusting the tail and having that separate from the body. Yeah. Yeah, that is frustrating. And it's okay if it comes in underneath it. We just want to make sure that it fills up that space real nice. And you can even kind of feed it, help feed it into some of those holes to make sure that it really gets a good fill. And when you add that polyester resin, it also buys you a little bit of time on drying, so you don't have to worry about it hardening up quite as much or as quickly as what you would if it were straight Bondo. And you just want to put it into place. You could have some pins handy. I don't know if I have any of the big, nice, long ones, but got a few T-pins here that you could even pin it into place just to make sure that it stays still. Um, the worst thing is when you go through all this work of doing different things and all of a sudden you bump it accidentally at the last minute. 
I'm just throwing in a few pins to kind of hold it. You got a big one over there, Tom? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. That, that guy will hold it. All right. Now we'll just let that be. Let that harden there. And then as soon as that hardens up, I'll be kind of watching this. And when it starts to gel, then we can come back with our rasp and just kind of rasp off the the parts that are coming out. This is all excess, of course, you can see. That's just extra foam that bubbled out when we we're foaming the pieces together. So it's kind of pour some foam, pour some Bondo, whatever, and then go ahead and rasp and clean it up and foam and carve and foam and carve. Isn't that right, Tom? Mm -hmm. And behind Amber over there, you can see these are, a lot of these Whoa. are all for the same, uh, same party. Uh, got the Cape Buffalo back there. Uh, we started finishing on those. We've got uh, the Sable, Waterbuck. Um, we've got more to do yet, as well as the elephant leopard. There. Elephant ears, we have elephant ears down there. Elephant ears will be uh, wall hangings for the map of Alaska. I like to enhance all of these spots and markings with, uh, you can use liquid scales, you can use um, the uh, permanent pigments, um, just about anything to color these if you want to. I like, I like liquid scales, so I take a liquid scale, put it in a little cup like this. I wanted to mix it, I, I put some, this is my favorite little palette that I like to use. Um, Looks but, like it's brand new. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, you asked why water paint and not uh, lacquer paint. This adheres really good to where this can't be cleaned. You know, mm. so, but since it can't be cleaned, when I put new paint in, it also doesn't you know, soften up. But uh, I just mix a nice creamy mix. And I want these, I want these markings uh, um, somewhat of a metallic golden yellow. So I used a bright gold with pearl. And all I'm gonna do, this is a water pen, by the way, if you've not used one of these um, for your fi fish work, they're exceptional. They hold water in the barrel, and um, that keeps your bristles from drying out. And mine is empty, so I'm gonna grab another one here. We actually have had so many requests that we have quite a few different tips that We do, we've got fine, we've got medium, we've got larges, we've got and some three we packs. And see in the catalog, we kind of switched yeah. them after the catalog went out, so. Um, but the nice thing about them, they're, they're exceptional for working with liquid scales or your permanent pigments. Um, they just keep from drying out and you can tip scales forever with these things. But um, what I'm using it for is I'm just gonna put a metallic wash over my markings. <laughs> AJ said that this is his new Thursday addiction. AJ Smith? No, but, oh. he, uh, but Nick Smith was watching earlier. AJ. Now, like I said, these can be um, not metallic at all, not iridescent. They can be to the gold phase. They can be uh, pearl, they can be platinum colored. You're just gonna have to look at what you're trying to match or what you like. What li color liquid scales are you using? I am using white pearl mixed with pure gold. Pure gold is just a little bit too, um, you know, metallic looking for me. And uh, the silver, I want a little bit of gold to it. And if you need to come over and do these 
a second time, you can. If I don't follow my, my mark perfectly, I can get it way out here and nobody's gonna know. It's going to really highlight the light part that you took the paint off of, took the pigment off of. Um, it won't hurt if you get it out here and nobody's gonna know. But I would do everything throughout this entire fish all the way through here. Um, these, pen, these pens also are great for, um, on pike, they have that little, that little V formation in the center of their um, scales. Wow, look at that. And, you know, as I'm kind of doing it with a pearl that I was using before just to show you, I would normally do a vivid gold through there in those Vs, but um, that looks, it looks like you're not doing anything, but when you get all of those Vs painted, these pike really pop and they look very, very natural. Um, but if you're gonna go to that kind of in depth, you can't just you can't just do a couple here and quit. You gotta do them all, all the way through the whole side of the fish. And I'm gonna bet you're gonna have about four hours or more to hit those little V check marks in the center of the scale. But the finished product is gonna be much, much, much nicer and more realistic. Can a water pen be used with pan pastels? And if so, do you only put water in the pen for that? Just put water in the pan. When we first For got all of it. When we first got these, we didn't know what to do with them. And we put paint in them, and that didn't work very well at all. Although you can get them with, with pigments in them. Um, but the water keeps your bristles moist. It does work with the with the um, permanent pigments. Uh, it does work to an extent with the pan pastels. Brett, have you had done much with the pan pastels? A little bit. Works. Yeah, yeah it works, works okay. Nice. Yeah. Works very nice. Um, I can take a little bit. Just Do you mix to show it with you. water? Do you mix it with? Don't mix it with anything. anything. Just dry out of here, and the water, um, the water in the pan should do it. And it makes just a little creamier mix. And because there's water in those bristles, um, it's almost like a little bonding agent. You know, so that's got water mixed with it. So it's kind of like a dry paint with water because my bristles are, are moist. Yeah. Um, but it works with uh, Pearlex, Pearlex powders. We also, I like to use Pearlex varnish with Pearlex. The, the Can varnish. you use the varnish with the pan pastels? Sure. Okay. And then what are you sealing with this stuff? Ah, triple thick glaze. Triple thick has gone round and round. We started getting it years and years ago and then it went to a Krylon product and then something changed and it didn't work as good and um, now we've got it back, but triple thick glaze works good. And, and the Krylon is now discontinued, so we can't yeah. get that one anymore. So this is replacing it. Looks like a little bit smaller bottle, but does the same thing. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a high gloss too. But uh, anytime you use any of the powders, whether you're using them with the pen, whether you're using the pan pastels, um, or whether you're using the Pearlex powders, after you've gone a while, you know, don't paint the whole fish because sure as shooting, you're gonna touch it like this and you're gonna wreck something. So once you are happy with what you got, stand back, dust it. That's all it takes to seal those powders in. Kind of like when you're doing a document, you always want to save in the middle so you don't get to the end and have it crash and lose it all. It took me 40 years to learn that. <laughs> I learned that. that with the catalog <laughs> a long time ago. We've all done that. Um, what else was I going to show oh, you? Yeah, another thing, you were talking about your pan pastels. This is a real difficult spot to blend your belly white. If you bring your belly white up on a lot of fish, I learned this from Mr. Wingfield, you bring your belly white up on a lot of fish, you get this harsh line. With a pike, they have a, look at this, it's already dry. Um, they have a real nice modeled look in here. And um, I don't have, do you have one of your little, uh, mm -hmm. your little applicators? Uh, micro applicators. 
And these pan pastels come in at lots and lots of different colors. And um, we have been selling out of our kits. I, uh, I, every time I say I was not in favor of these, it wasn't my go-to type medium, but, but uh, the more you use them, they're pretty handy. But what Brett showed me to do with this is you get a little on your applicator and you just start bringing these markings down a little bit. Boy, you smallmouth people, this would be the ticket. Oops, secret, secret. <laughs> now it goes on kind of harsh, and you think, oh my gosh, I wrecked it. Blow it onto Joss's phone lens. And when do you use a colorless blender for those harsh? Is that something you would incorporate in? Or? Um, yes, and I have not had a lot of experience with that. Brett, do you have any insight into the colorless blender? I haven't used it. Not yet. But they say you can't use this without it because it's just the, the thing to do. Yep. The evenings. And I think it blends all your color. It's like, it's like a lot of the old paint schedules used to say, um, um, what did they have? Trans yeah, but they called it something else. Um, something, but it, that's what it was. It was amber oxide that you sprayed on the whole fish and it looked like yellow varnish. And in the old days, we tried everything to not let anything yellow, and now they sell you something that tells you to put it on so it yellows. Um, but anyway, um, that would be great for, now if you, if you don't like what you got because it's powder, you can paint over it, you can wipe it off. Um, you can smudge it with your finger a little bit to take out some of the harshness, but that looks kind of kind of natural. You can use it on any fish, you can use it on bluegill, you can use it on bass, but uh, that's a pan pastels. And these come in so many different colors, and if this green is too green for you and you want it browner, you can mix, you can put a little bit of brown on your brush or on your applicator and mix it in here. This stuff mixes just like lacquer paint, just like water paint. Although it's powder, you can mix the two. It is a little past the top of the hour, Oops, so we're gonna sorry. announce, no, you're good, the last week's winner, and we only have 21 shares for next week, so make sure you share, because your odds are pretty good about winning for next week, but this week's winner, we have a whitetail photo book, which those have been selling out like crazy, our angle grooming brush, calipers, and our base. And the two winners, I'm gonna just say, the first one to comment is gonna get it, otherwise it goes to a live viewer. But Wayne Stanford or Tanner Dozler, either one of you, whichever is first, you will get it, otherwise it goes to a live viewer. So chime in if you are watching. We have a lot of people that don't tune in for them. Next week, some and they people miss can't. Out. Some people have a life outside of the Thursday videos. Some people better get their priorities straight. And they have to straight. catch it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we are the priority. All right. Where do you want us next? Well, let's go check the tail out again. Um, next week, you want to know what we're doing next week, incidentally? What are we doing next week? Maybe I'm jumping ahead, but this this leopard. I think I'm gonna be uh, gone next week. Quiz. <laughs> Uh, this leopard is going to be laying on a really, really, really log slab, mm -hmm. which we will make from scratch. He looks cuddly. Um, he's going to look really exceptional. Um, so Amber's making trees now. This is going to be, this is gonna be <laughs> In a the 2020 catalog? Big chunk of the tree, too. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a fun, it'll be a fun one next week doing that. Now what's nice about that tail is you can actually bend it with the wire to mm -hmm. shape it however mm -hmm. you want. Yep. Yep. So it's really nice. You can go ahead and <laughs> get any little bit of curl that you want into it. And it's real good stiff wire, so it's got really good support. So now that the bondo's kind of hardened up here, I just kind of smoothed it up at the top of the with the top of the back so it makes a really nice smooth connection. You don't want to drag your bondo too far down onto onto the tail because this is flexible obviously so if you drag it too far down it'll crack and pull away from the material but this is a really really strong connection for these tails. Now it's just just continuing to uh, to rasp all of this off and remove all of the screws 
And I don't know if we've really talked about these screws at all, but these are just awesome, awesome, awesome screws. Very much so a lifesaver. Um, they will make your life of altering so much easier. You can be able to, to go all the way through. Some of these, I came up through the elbow and up into the body. I was able to go from the head up into the body, um, depending on which size length of screw that you get. So. There's a lot of people that, that would never, I jumped into something like this, and I'll tell you a story of one of my first alteration projects with the life size muscons. And I got it already from McKinsey, and uh, it was in a lot of pieces when I got it. And mm -hmm. I shortened him, and I made him way smaller, and I had like 13 pieces. And I was very poor little trish mouse at that time, <laughs> and I spent $900 on this, on this muskox, and I wasn't sure I was going to get it back together. And I got to sure. go home and tell my wife that I don't think the muskox is going to fly, because yeah. I don't know what goes where anymore. So walk them through just what went through your mind and how did you get to this from from where you did yeah well, some what was it to start with what did it look like uh well i don't i don't have down, picture. His head up yeah he had his head way up with a full upright and then he had both of his arms kind of kind of hanging down below him um this back leg was was pretty much the same way but i raised it up it was kind of more turned down and underneath him so just if you have a picture of what you want to do or you have a good idea in your mind that a picture really really helps um even if you don't have a picture of, a, of the whole pose but you're like i really like that leg it, it's really helpful especially when you're new to altering um to go off of pictures because you have something to revert back to once you cut a leg off of this thing it yeah it can be intimidating when you're when you don't know exactly what you're doing um, I would recommend starting with one piece at a time. Some people, after a lot of practice, you can get to the point where you can do the whole thing and you just, you take this leg off and you take all four legs off and you cut the head off and then you can start altering um, the body or do whatever. But that again, gets really intimidating because all of a sudden you got a pile of parts. So if you're new to it, I would say take one leg off at a time or do one, stick to one piece, don't you think, Tom? Mm -hmm. And then, go you know, slow. go slow. Yep. Um, so you don't end up with 13 pieces and start crying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you raise him up? Because he looks really, yes. really yeah. impressive Sorry. when he's up. Hi. Yeah. But moving legs, just think about how, uh, how your body works and how their body works. Um, how their joints work if they're if you know if he bends his knee where is it going to move at you know find your find your points where he's going to bend and move and when we alter it we're funny because we'll sit here and we'll be moving our bodies and doing different things you know thinking about okay can he do this you know could he could he move his elbow that way could he move his wrist this way and and just a lot of thinking about you know can they do that and make sure that you're you're moving them at the proper spots you don't want to cut them in the middle of his of his shoulder blade because you know they don't bend in the middle of their shoulder blade so just kind of think of where all their joints would be and then while well, when you got it kind of roughed in a little bit then you got the hide out today and yep. that will tell you a lot the hide will dictate where you know if you're on the right track it'll show you where your joints are you know if, if, the, if you're stretching and pulling trying to get that skin um, the knee where the knee goes and the ankle where the ankle goes something's probably wrong you might have done something you yep. know, that you're gonna have to back up and change and it's not a bad idea to before you even start altering start with your pose that you're you know that that you bought and test fit the animal onto it first so you know that the height is going to fit the animal and it's not a problem of size versus the way you position them because sometimes you could have done everything right but if he didn't fit to begin with well he's not going to fit after you alter him so make sure that you i would test fit it first then do your alterations into the position and then test fit again um, as far as, as far as turning, that's, that's about all I really know. Um, I can't really give much on the head when you, when you're moving and bending neck joints, um, kind of think of it. I, I don't really have a good way of describing it, but take, think of it as taking out a, a pizza slice on one side that you want to 
slide over, but without a billboard or something to draw on, it's kind of hard to describe. Main thing is, is that you don't want to make him any bigger or smaller than what he was. And you can do that pretty easy. So by bend, cutting it the, bend the spine where the spine can spin, bend, spin the, bend the neck where the neck can bend, bend the tail where the tail can bend. Don't, right. don't kind of take a big pie shape out of one side. Yep. Think of where your where your bone structure is inside of these animals because that's where they're going to be There's all rotating from. Here. You got to pick a number, buddy. Really? Yeah. No. Okay. Nobody can see me, right? Right. What's the number? Uh, one through thirty-four. <laughs> Got it. All right. So for those live viewers right now, our winners didn't chime in. So one through thirty-four. Start guessing your number, and the first one that we see, first one that we see, is who will get to pick a. Bag. And sometimes the first one you see isn't the first one that really did it. Right? No, because sometimes we have a thousand guesses come through at a time. And then I think Brett is working on no, some this. more no. over there. Mm -hmm. We got a winner. We got a winner. Oh, winner. chicken dinner. Brandon Hitchcock. Oh, hey, Brandon. 21. <laughs> okay, do we want to go over? Oops, we got to do that now? No, I'll get it ready. You guys can keep right. do it. Go to Brett. Go over to this. Um, beautiful. <laughs> Whoops. We're going to go yeah. We can do that. Um, we are playing with a little rainbow trout today. In addition to crocodiles and leopards and northern pike. And we kind of do that on just, here, don't we? We do. We've got so many things going. It's Whoa. Christmas time and we're just kind of putting out fires. <laughs> so um, this reproduction obviously started white earlier today. Went through and quickly just did a, a steel wool wash coat. Um, built some base colors. Did some scale tipping up in the back. Um, one thing I really like to do... Um, with cold water fish and thought I'd save a few spots to show you is I like to get this little halo around the spots. And it's really simple to do. Um, it's a nice detail. And you can do it with either pan pastels or with an airbrush. Um, but what I've done is I painted my spots um, on the tail. We'll look at the tail first. And uh, right now I'm just gonna darken around them and leave just a little bit of a halo. I don't know if you can see that. That is the custom micron in action and it just decided it wanted to sit on me. This paint's been in the brush all day, so. So you're not using a Sharpie marker on that? I did not use a Sharpie marker. Actually, I used a water pen and Woods and Waters paint because if you look down at this reference picture, this is the fish we're trying to paint. And let's just get it in comparison. You got a lot more There's dots. a too. lot of spots. <laughs> so rather than um, now on the, on the fins and head where they're very round, I went ahead and used the airbrush, but um, on the uh, body, I did just a water pen, and it worked pretty good. Um, so now I'm just gonna come around these spots like this, and just leave a little halo. Like that, it goes pretty fast. I mean, it works really good on the head. Um, and any of the soft, fleshy areas, the head, the adipose fin, um, the tail, just gives a really nice effect, kind of quick. I'm not going to be too precise if you wanted to get your airbrush dialed way down and get in super close, you can. I just, I'm looking for an effect here. This is... Just the dark, I think it might be like yox nose gray or something like that. We'll go up real quick to the adipose fin up here and I'll show you how that kind of is. And again, really good spot for the pan pastels too.
So same thing we do kind of up in here, finish, we can go down here. And then it's nice to do, we won't do it on this fish, but some that have a little lesser spot pattern, you can come in through the back and do some of that. So just a quick little hairbrush tip for creating spots. What else we got? I'm gonna show you the website real quick. Just uh, make sure you guys are following us on Facebook. We're gonna, I haven't talked my mom into it yet, but it's gonna be easy. But we're going to start doing um, carousels on Facebook, and if you share it, we'll have a winner almost every day, every other day of winning something. I'm super excited about it. What is a carousel? A carousel is where you have different gift ideas that they can slide pictures and they can shop now, but you share that, and then we have one of the products that we will be giving away. But on our um, website, we have picked a Christmas gift collection, so if you have that hard person to buy for, you can go there and have some easy gift ideas for the taxidermist, hunter, outdoorsman, woman in your life, and that's an easy way to and do it. And don't wait till Christmas week. Does it work to with Christmas parties? It depends who you have. <laughs> <laughs> if you have Tom, yes. Amber, oh, yes. I get another water brush. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Brandon, you get to pick a big folder. Brent. So pick your bag holder, Brandon. And we will, Mandy, Amber, Brett, Tom, and we will let you see what's in it. Make sure you're sharing. Everybody who's not watching this live tomorrow and through the weekend, you can still share it. We will pick the winner next week, Thursday. Tom. Oh, I think that's a good choice because it's light, which means it's paper, which means it didn't fit in the box. Oh, it's a base. Marcy. Oh, it's a base, water base. That's what you nice. hollow with the water. We'll get that sent to you, Brandon. Congratulations. Make sure to share the video, like it, let us know what you think. Um, you can always go on our Facebook page and review us and give us some that's stars. Fun. I know, that's exciting. And next week you're making a tree? Well, next week I think we'll go through. I think we probably will have the leopard mounted. Mm -hmm. um, we will have, no. Um, <laughs> we will have, I think we will. The crocodile um, will be all painted. The rainbow will probably yeah. be done and bossed and on something. The pipe will be on something. So we'll show you those projects that we kind of started today. Um, and I think we're going to have a good, you know, lot done on the tree. You probably better come back and look at the eye. I don't think you saw that. Oh, let's look at that. This whole crocodile eye looks pretty nice. Mm -hmm. We got a nice nictitating membrane up there in the front. Sclera around the back. That's kind of a nice job. Well, they're on camera. It was quick. You gotta hurry. Were those eyes? What kind of what kind of eyes did you use? Um, the eyes are Tohican eyes. Okay. Do we carry cocktail No, no we, we had don't. a special order, didn't we? You know, I went downstairs and I had one pair which was too small. Oh. We do have random, yeah, random yeah. stuff that. Um, and the crocodile, we put him together, kind of basically yeah. last this week, this week, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. After you and Amber spent plenty of time altering <laughs> to get to this pose, that was. Um, this pose is just. That, that. This is going to be really, really cool. He slips on and off. These are, this is the, just to give us an idea, give you an idea of what we did. Um, these are the measurements of the tail skin um, every three inches because we had to reshape that tail. When you start bending things like that, things get kind of long and short. And so we had to um, cut it where the spine would go. And I took the skin and I took a, um, a width every three inches and made that tail fit that. So that was our, kind of our blueprint for that. So it fit in one try? I mean, it kind of fit one time. Fit Pretty much good work. It. Yeah. it wasn't a bad, it wasn't yeah. a bad. A little twink here and there. And then, so you're using neck foam to get the shaping or what's that for? Um, yeah, he's got muscles in him. He's got a, a nice little definition between his muscle on the tail. So we took T-pins and just pushed them right into the neck foam, which holds that. Now, if you were to take that off, 
Um, when he dries, that's, that valley is going to stay in there. And you do that to your mammals as well. Sometimes, yeah. Uh, you got a couple choices. If we wanted to babysit this and every day come in and push and push and push and push, we could do that, but we kind of don't have that time. So we kind of want to set it and forget it. And so by putting, spending just a little bit of time um, putting this neck foam in here, it's going to hold that in place. And after the glue sets and the skin starts to shrink down, um, we pull all this out and Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Might have to fill some little pinholes. Jesse okay. Wells says, slow down on that guy. I want to see him in person in January. Because oh, Jesse's this, coming to Northwest Iowa gonna, School. I hope he's not going to be here in January. Yeah. We're going to need cash before Pictures then. only. Um, yeah, but uh, he's going to be pretty impressive. He's just an impressive pose. And, and uh, it's kind of a, a little bit of a stock pose, but we just altered it a little bit. And he sits on this base. We're going to like him, we think. Mm -hmm. So, again, you are with Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, and we are live every Thursday at 4.30 Central Time. So, tune in. You can always rewatch our videos. So, if you go to our Facebook page, um, there is a tab that's videos, and you can rewatch all of them that we've done for the last. We're coming up on a year. And well, how many is it now? I, you made me count one night. I had a discussion with somebody who said it wasn't Jim that Rao, many. and you it made me lot, count, and it, it was, I think, over 100, but I want to say low 100, like 100. Are we going to have an anniversary party? Ooh. Oh, my gosh. It'd be fun. <laughs> but anyway, tune in. Go back and watch the videos. Make sure you share them because we do give away something every single week. And follow us on Facebook in the next three weeks because we'll be doing the carousels and giveaways as much as I'm allowed to give stuff away. So, thanks for tuning in. And Thank we'll you, everybody. Catch you next Have a good night. See you next Thursday.